What's up guys, Max here for Rev3 Games, and I'm with Derek, who is the producer for Darkstalkers Resurrection, which is, um, what is Darkstalkers Resurrection? <laughs> Darkstalkers Resurrection is a combo pack of two classic arcade games that have been uh, upscaled, HDified, and brought to modern consoles with a whole host of extra features to give them additional replay value and uh, new things for fans of the series to explore. My god, that is a PR read right there. Uh, but Darkstalkers, it's, uh, for people it's who are job, unfamiliar, yeah. how would you explain Darkstalkers? Because at a glance it is a fighting game, but beyond that... Yeah, so it's a fighting game. Uh, there are a lot of design choices that are different that separate it from a lot of Capcom's other fighting games. Uh, for example, in Darkstalkers 3, uh, which is the game that we've currently got booted up here in the compilation, the rounds don't end when one of the characters loses all their health. Instead, you lose one of your lives, your character stands back up, and you continue battling. The characters themselves are incredibly rich, their histories are super detailed, and they're just very, very vivid. They're all based on classical horror tropes, monsters, things like that, werewolves, vampires. That's the part, that's the word I was trying to get girls. you to say was werewolf or cat girl, <laughs> whichever. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's some familiar characters who've, who've popped up in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom and, and stuff like that, and just kind of, you know, probably probably some message boards. Because uh, there's there's some there's some recognizable characters. Who's the who's the bee girl? The bee girl is a QB or a queen bee, and she is a, sort of a human fly sort of character, except she's half bee, half woman. She has a big bee butt. She does, and a stinger and everything. <laughs> I love it. I love how ridiculous this game is. Anyway, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump in here and, and take a look at how this is. Sure. So uh, obviously, what you've actually got running here. So I'll go ahead and boot up Darkstalkers Three here. Uh, what you've actually got running here is the original arcade game in the background. So all we've done is put a wrapper around it that adds a bunch of new features and makes it prettier. So we've got these bats on the side to take up some of that real estate space. The text has been made nicer. The character portraits are new and updated. Now I can already hear some of our fans going, oh, but I like the old character portraits. I, I want the old original text. Don't worry, guys. That's in here, too. You can shut off all this up stuff if you want it and just play the game in its original pixelated glory. Uh, what's going on in the, uh, the sidebar here? So what you see on the sidebars over there are what we call awards. They're a series of dynamic challenges that get pushed to you while you're playing the game. And uh, these dynamic challenges will update on the screen. You can see them blinking there as I do things, uh, as you complete stuff. And when you complete them, you earn points, which can be used to unlock content. Everything from concept art to movies to uh, some special surprises that you'll have to buy the game and check out for yourself. Do you have any episodes of the Dark Stalkers animated series? We do not, but that would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Those are those are probably on, on some YouTube channel somewhere. Uh, let me. Can we see some of the other uh, the other kind of visual modes you've got going on here? Yeah, sure. So uh, there is a ton of custom customizability and how you want to see this and like it. So first of all, uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like if you just uh, turn off all of our filtering stuff. So this is what the original game looks like if you just bring it to high definition, uh, current day TV. That looks like a Super Nintendo game. <laughs> Amazing how that works, isn't it? Uh, back in those days. But if you go ahead and turn on some of the filters, you can recreate what you guys may remember from playing it back in the arcades. For example, uh, this combination of filters is meant to emulate an old CRT screen. Oh so man, see I love it. That's how video games used to look. They had lines all over them. Yes, the scan lines have been uh, implemented. The screen is actually bent. I don't know if you can tell, but if you look at the bottom, uh, the screen is actually wrapped on a, on a curved surface. Oh man. So uh, to try and recreate even the bending that you're used to seeing from those old monitors. Oh, my, my nostalgia, it aches. It hungers. We've taken it even a step forward, oh, though. You can my tilt. God. You can tilt the screen different angles. So you got this one, and then kind of the coup de gras is uh, over the shoulder view mode, which puts you on an actual arcade cabinet, complete with sticks and See, buttons is, and everything. <laughs> this is how I remember I remember arcade games looking because I was very poor and rarely had quarters, <laughs> so I watched other people play. I. I used to, all the time, uh, wind up in lines at the Street Fighter machine and things like that. The guys in front of me playing, my quarter up on the machine waiting for my oh, turn. Man. And for me, this brings back a lot of those you memories. just put some quarters on top of the TV. <laughs> uh, we've actually had people do that, yes. Absolutely. So, so uh, this, is, this is great. And this is, um, again, this is, this is two games. This is Darkstalkers 3 and Darkstalkers 2. Yes. Would you like to see the other game? Sure, yeah. Let's, so let's here, let me uh, show you how easy it is to switch. So you don't have to back out of the collection or do anything to switch games. All you got to do is go back to the main menu and press select. And it'll toggle games oh, for you. And all this, all this artwork here is, is brand new. Brand new artwork created just for this game. And uh, I mean, we've only started touching upon all the features that are included in this thing. It has one of the most robust online modes you'll find from any game like this ever. What have we got going on for, for online stuff? Well, so for, so for the online stuff, you've got eight-player online mode, uh, lobbies, you know, ranked match and player match. You've also got spectator mode, so you can watch people playing. You've also got eight-player tournament mode. 
We've also got Watch With Friends mode, which is basically a lobby where you go with your friends to stream replays into it, watch matches as they happen, and then talk about strategies and stuff without actually playing yourself Jeez. with your friends if it's you want to like do that. It's like you guys are catering to the fighting game community or something. We're, we're trying our hardest. <laughs> so uh, here's the other game. This is uh, uh, Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge it's called. Uh, the names get a little bit confusing because uh, the first game was called Darkstalkers The Night Warriors. The second game was called Night Warriors The Darkstalkers Revenge. So the games that are included in this one are the second and the third one, Night Warriors and uh, Darkstalkers 3. Okay. So, uh, well, this either one way, is... they, sound, they sound cool. Yeah. I love the, the, the coolness of the words. <laughs> and the, the characters all look very colorful and, and nice. I don't know, it's, it's just, I, I wish that video games didn't take themselves so seriously. I wish that every game was more, kind of a little bit more ridiculous. So talking about ridiculous and video games not taking themselves <sighs> seriously, the backgrounds to these characters are amazingly rich and deep. The character that I'm playing right now, John Talbane, uh, so he's a werewolf, a guy that was cursed, you know, right. with uh, lycanthropy or whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. He becomes a wolf whenever it comes to the night of the moon. Yeah, but, or, uh, you know, when he, he feels like fighting a Frankenstein. Yes, exactly. But uh, he wanted to learn how to control it. So he decided to learn martial arts in an attempt to, you know, calm himself down and uh, gain mastery over his own body and get control of his uh, his ur primal urges and things like God, that. God, if I ever write a book, I hope that what you just said is on the inside flap. So the problem with this is that it didn't work. So now all he's managed to do is create a werewolf monster that knows kung fu. God, that's awesome. That <laughs> so, is so good. Uh, as you'll see, some of his moves and things, they're, they're all based on kung fu moves. And uh, he's got... <laughs> uh, what if a werewolf learned kung fu? Yes, he's Dark got... Darkstalkers. Exactly. All the characters have stories that are, are similar to that. They're very rich, they're all interrelated with each other, and the lore of the series is something that is really fascinating. And actually, I was mentioning earlier, on the main menu, it goes through a lot of those lore tidbits, and it gives you uh, information about the characters right. and about the games, things you might not have known that you know fans of the series might find interesting, or yeah. things that maybe they do know yeah. and would just like seeing uh, again and being reminded of, because it's that's, all such cool stuff. That's fun, that's good stuff. I, 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 those, those kind of little tidbits of, of flavor text are always seem so, so tacked on. It's like, you know, uh -huh. you know, are you tired? You should go outside or take a 15 minute break. It's no, tell me about tell me about the werewolf that learned kung fu. Yeah, or I how want these things. or how this guy Baishaman basically found his uh, found this cursed armor in an antique store, and uh, purchased it and put it on, and bam, now he's a cursed samurai guy. Yeah, discount um, samurai. Yeah, exactly. So uh, another of the major features that's included in this game is the ability to save replays of your matches. Oh. Uh, play them back, not just locally, but you can upload them to our replay ser server, share them with your friends, rate them, search them on different criteria. Do you have uh, YouTube access? We do. Wow. So you can upload the replays straight to YouTube from within the game. Is, uh, is one of our, our cooler features. Crap, I might be out of a job there. <laughs> the kids can suddenly put video game stuff on the internet. Uh, we've also got a whole ton of stuff that the fans have requested, things like the ability to access control settings on the character select screen. That's and, always uh, good. To stop people from doing it accidentally, we've made it so you have to hold down the button for a little bit for it to, to actually come up. Uh, we also have other things like the ability to turn off, I mentioned earlier, all of this high resolution art that we've added, but also the challenge sidebars and things that are popping up on the side. Yeah, if, that's, if you if think that's they're too distracting, much, too much you don't noise. like them, you can shut all that stuff off and turn yeah, it off. Yeah, if text popping up in a fighting game distracts you, you know, maybe maybe a different genre is in order, but hey, you know, you can turn off <laughs> some of it. Um, yeah, so when's, when's this coming out? So it's coming out March 12th and 13th for uh, Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. And it's 15 bucks for both games and all of those features. That's not bad. That's a pretty That's a pretty good deal. I think you'd be hard pressed to find anything better. Yeah. Fighting games, step up your, your game and, and release things from our childhood for, for 15 bucks, please. <laughs> anyway, Derek, thank you so much for talking. Uh, Darkstalkers Resurrection looks, looks badass. It's got werewolves and kung fu in it. It it's does. 15 indeed. bucks. What more could you want? <laughs>